Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. Happy holidays. We're back in studio for a new edition of Takedown, your source for what's trending in the world of wrestling. Let's start with Northwestern University and the Midlands Championships. The committee there has released a list of top contenders for this year's event. A total of 71 ranked wrestlers will hit the mats December 29th, including 38 athletes ranked inside the top 10. At 125, top ranked Hawkeye Thomas Gilman will be joined by number 8 ranked Tim Lambert and the 5th ranked Josh Rodriguez of North Dakota State. Another top ranked Hawkeye returns to action at 33. Corey Clark will defend his Midlands title against the likes of the 6th ranked Seth Gross and 2nd ranked Big Ten rival Zane Richards. Leading the field at 41, 3rd ranked Princeton Tiger Matthew Kolodzik along with 5th ranked Kevin Jack and the 6th ranked Anthony Ashnell. 2nd ranked Brandon Sorensen will take the top seat at 49 while teammate Michael Kemmerer will make his Midlands debut as the favorite at 57. Two-time NCAA champ Isaiah Martinez will headline the field at 65, along with Wisconsin's national runner-up Isaac Jordan. We go to 74. Arizona State freshman Zahid Valencia will be joined by All-Americans Leyland Weatherspoon and Alex Meyer. With a total of 10 top-ranked athletes in the field, 84, that's the way to watch. Featuring NCAA champ Miles Martin along with returning Midlands runner-up TJ Dudley and defending 184-pound champ Jack Deckow of Old Dominion. We go to 197. We'll see seven ranked wrestlers in the field, including the fourth ranked Nate Grubtard and Princeton All American Brett Harner. And finally, at 285, the second ranked Connor Medbury will take on fellow top five heavyweights Tanner Hall and Sam Stoll. With more on the 54th Ken Craft Midlands, here's longtime announcer Sandy Stevens. If I had to sum it up in one word, it would be tradition. I have to give such honor to Ken Craft. I don't know anyone who does not both like and respect Ken, and there aren't a lot of people you could probably say that about, but he started that tradition. The quality of the Midlands became a tradition, and people still expect to see that aspect of the tradition. It's always exciting because of the unexpected, I think. That has not changed. Tickets to the event are available now at nusports.com and by phone at 888-GO-PURPLE. Fans, you're encouraged to join the conversation via social media when you use the hashtag Midlands54. All right, stay tuned. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to Casey's General Store. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years.
Well, the Arizona State Wrestling Squad sees it every day. A large poster displayed on a wall in the Sun Devils wrestling room featuring members of the 1988 NCAA championship team. In April of 2014, one member of that team returned to Arizona State with the same lofty goals he had as an athlete a quarter century ago. From Takedown Radio, here's head coach Zeke Jones on bringing his alma mater back to national prominence. Ray Anderson, our athletic director, who came out of the NFL, took the job at Arizona State and his first hire was me. And Ray said, hey, are you interested in this job? And I said, well, gosh, I'm coaching the best team in the world. Why would I want to leave? <laughs> and he said, because I want to do that here. Wow. And when he said that, I knew he just couldn't say that without understanding the impact of the statement. But I knew he had the right team of people. President Michael Crow, who was a high school wrestler at Arizona State, uh, and I say he's a, he was a high school wrestler, but he's the president at Arizona State with Ray Anderson. And then the other cog of the puzzle, as, as most folks know, Art Martori, who's sure. the founder of the Sunkiss Kid Wrestling Club and the visionary, you know, the number one club in the world, 40 World Olympic medals over, or 60 World Olympic medals over the last 40 years. Art, Dr. Crow, President Crow, and Ray Anderson got together and they said, let's Either we wallow in mediocrity or we make a change, and, but we do it and we do it right. So when they called, um, they said, hey, we're going to increase the funding. We're going to fund this like an Iowa Penn State. We're going to do it right. We're going to put all the resources behind it to be successful. And they did. And so th interestingly, the day that I got hired, uh, it was announced on, in the media and Ruben and Valencia and I talked that day as soon as I got the job. And he, you know, just said, hey, Arizona State wasn't on our radar, but now that you're there, it is. Wow. And they, I call them the first believers. They were the first ones to believe that Arizona State could be great again because you guys know 25 years of history and tradition in the program and lots of success. Then, you know, now we as you know, with Fritz and, and then bringing on Pendleton and that top recruiting class right out of the gate, and now they're all finally getting into the lineup, which is great. Uh, but I still think that it's going to take time because it takes a community to build it, right? You just can't do it one coach at a time. You, it takes a lot of people rallying around the community support, which has been great. Uh, you know, we're, we're do, breaking attendance records and season ticket sales and and I, you know, it's seven freshmen, two sophomores, and a junior. We don't have any seniors on our roster. So we're a very young team. And next year when, uh, not to point to next year yet, but when we get guys like Thursus and Milhoff there it is. and ready to compete, then I think we can get in a place where we can start fighting for a trophy. Also joining us last Saturday on Takedown Radio, another head coach with a fast-rising program, Princeton's Chris Ayers. The Tigers feature four nationally ranked wrestlers in their starting lineup, including the fourth-ranked Matthew Klodzik and returning All-American Brett Harner. Here's coach Chris Ayers on the Grapple at the Garden, the Ken Graff Midlands, and hosting the 2017 All-Star Classic. Talk about um, taking Princeton out on the road to a big event like that and more than anything, the rise of the Princeton Tigers program. It's been slow and steady, but nonetheless, it has been steady. Yeah, um, that was an amazing event. When you get the opportunity to wrestle at Madison Square Garden, you don't turn it down. Uh, that weekend isn't ideal for us. It's Thanksgiving weekend. We usually like to give the guys a break, but if they're going to have that event, we're going to be there. And as you know, we wrestled two weekends prior to that. We wrestled uh, uh, Rutgers in front of 16,000 people in their football stadium, so we're trying to create uh, opportunities for our guys to wrestle in big time events, so they're prepared for the big stage. Like, uh, so yeah, awesome, awesome uh, event. Chris, can you comment? Uh, yes or no? Can you comment about the All Star Classic heading to Princeton for next year? Yeah, it's here uh, next year. Uh, we we had a, we had a small meeting the other day with some business people uh, in the area, and I told them Chadwin holds about eight thousand, and I said to them I would be incredibly disappointed if we don't sell it out so we're going to work hard like we did for the Rutgers event uh, we're going to try to pack Jadwin gym which is probably the most historic uh, wrestling venue in the state we need more events like that we copied Iowa but you know that's what makes wrestling great we know there's a market for wrestling but we don't we don't push it enough and I think that that's the main issue with our sport right now is we don't go out and promote like 
like, say, the UFC or something along those lines. There's no huge events. But I think it's getting a lot better. Um, and, and so we're just trying to put people in seats and show off a good product. Chris, I want to look ahead just a little bit. You're going to go to the Midlands. The Midlands, obviously, tough every year, but really tough this year with nine of the top 20 teams there. Talk to us about your expectations for the Midlands. Uh, we generally wrestle well at the Midlands. The guys get a little break here for Christmas. I think it really rejuvenates them. Uh, a lot of times coaches get nervous because there's some time off here, but I think it's great for the guys. And, and, and historically, we wrestled pretty well there last year. I think we had four placers or something like that. Um, so I'm excited. We have some guys that could win the event. I think, uh, obviously, Matthew Kolodzik's ranked third in the country. Uh, he should probably be seated first. Um, and then uh, Brett Harner, who took uh, eighth last year as a returning All-American. I expect big things from him. Um, and then we have a few guys on the cusp that I think can make some noise. They're just poised to make that jump. So I'm expecting our guys to wrestle hard. We'll be without three of our starters, though, uh, just due to injury. They should be back pretty quickly, but we're trying to manage their, uh, I guess you could call it their situation, so we get them back for our duel. So we will be without three of our starters, but I expect our guys to wrestle well. Our college wrestling coverage continues after the break. You're watching Takedown, presented by Yellow Blue Ecotech. In this town, there's only one pizza joint that has your best interests in mind. They make every single pie from scratch. With the freshest ingredients and 100% real mozzarella. Oh, and if your engine's running a quart low, well, they can take care of that too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Right now, get free breadsticks with the purchase of any large made from scratch pizza. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green but cost-effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. All right, welcome back to Takedown, fans. Our holiday special continues. This time we head to Brookings, South Dakota with the head coach of the 18th-ranked Jackrabbits, Chris Bono, joins us. Coach, how are you? Well, I'm doing great. Everything is uh, rolling along. How are you guys doing? We are good. We're very interested in what is indeed going on with the South Dakota State Jacks. And i gotta, I got to tell you, first of all, well done. Uh, the score with the University of Iowa may not tell the whole story, however. Um, I'm talking about the rebuild of this program, the introduction of this program to a much higher of that, uh, a level that you and John Reeder have, have imposed on this program, and, and they are responding well. Can you talk about first just your position on your squad? Yeah, we're excited. Um, it's been, you know, this is our fifth year there, and it's been a, a work in progress for sure. And, um, you know, all four years uh, that before this have really been pointing towards this year and next year. Um, in my in my plan, when I interviewed, when I when I uh, in my my manual that I have uh, to how to rebuild a program and how to how to uh, take a program that was struggling to uh, to um, ensure that we're going to have success. Uh, this is year five in that program, and this is the year we're supposed to be able to develop kids and uh, put them on that all uh, on that podium and try to have national champions. Um, we know it doesn't happen overnight, and I do have a five-year plan. And it's, uh, it, it seems to be working and it's come to fruition that uh, this is our year to be able to, uh, that we should be able to put all of uh, have all Americans out there. It's like a flower in the springtime just opening up little by little. The petals start showing their colors. And you showed your colors against the University of Minnesota. It was a loss, 
but a tight one, 17-18, Coach. How was, what, was the, what was the emotion that was going through you, uh, your head and heart at that, uh, that time on the 19th of November? Well, it, it, was, it was a little bit of everything. You know, We knew we could win if we went up there and wrestled well. Uh, we didn't win, uh, but we were winning the whole match. So it was a, a whole ebb and flow of um, of emotions going through us. And then at the end, the way we lost, uh, you know, uh, one of our guys got disqualified at the end to lose the duel. Um, I hurt for the kids. I was hurting for the fans. I was hurting for the program. We had beaten them in 48 some years, and uh, we had about 500 fans taking. You know, we took a bus up there, a fan bus, and um, you know, it just hurts for the kids that have really bought in and really believed that this was our time to get them and. Uh, but you know what? I was proud of their effort, and I was even more proud of um, how they got back on that bus, got home, and got back to work, knowing that March is our goal and uh, that we needed to prepare for the next week. And uh, you know, with Iowa coming in, so uh, it was it was good. And we know it was November and December, and uh, March is the final goal for us. I love I love the growth, Coach. Let's move to the second of December. We showed even more growth. The score perhaps was not indicative of that growth in a loss of. 8 to 29. What did you learn about your team? Uh we've got some fighters, you know. We've got good kids, uh and that's what's 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 so exciting. Um they showed up against Iowa and they responded. They wrestled they wrestled I won't say they wrestled great, but they wrestled well and you know, we went back and watched the film and we in four matches, you know, we're really one situation away from winning those matches and you know, give credit to Iowa. They went out and they won those tough positions that we talk about all the time. Uh, we tell these kids in a tight match, there's going to be a situation where you're either going to get tough and win the position and win the match, or you're going to kind of, you know, get out tough and lose that position. And we lost all four um, in four matches. And we felt if we won those four positions, the outcome would have been a little different. Uh, but you know what? They learn. Now they, they learn what it's going to be like in the quarterfinals of the NCAA tournament uh, to win that tough 3 2 match or come back and win a 6 5 match. So. Uh, we, uh, I'm glad Iowa had us on the schedule. I'm glad we got the rest of them. I'm glad they got that feel of a, of a quality opponent who uh, has the tradition of, of, of winning. And, um, and now it's, it's, it's go time, and they know what to expect uh, throughout the rest of the second semester in the championship season, the Big 12s and the NCAA tournament. Coach, we're looking forward to seeing you December 29th and 30th in action in Evanston, Illinois at the Midlands Championships. Uh, a tip of the cap to uh, Kenny Kraft, of course, at Ken Kraft Midlands Championships. It's been a pleasure talking with you today, Coach, and we appreciate the opportunity. All right. Thanks for having me. Always, always enjoy it. From the University of Iowa, Terry Brands joins us right after the break. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to Nike Wrestling. for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. pizza joint that has your best interests in mind. They make every single pie from scratch. The freshest ingredients. 100% real mozzarella. Oh, and if your engine's running a quart low? Well, they can take care of that, too. Casey's. Famous for pizza. Right now, get free breadsticks with the purchase of any large made-from-scratch pizza. All right, welcome back. We've got another special guest in the Nike hot seat today. He's longtime associate head coach of the Iowa Hawkeyes, Terry Brands, joins us live. Coach, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good, man. The, the holidays seem to be giving gifts each and every day for most of us, and one of them I got yesterday was the news that 
Carver Hawkeye would be the site of the 2018 Freestyle World Cup for, uh, for USA Wrestling and for the world to, uh, to view the sport of wrestling. Let's talk about how did it happen, first of all. I think it happened because Iowa City is a unique place, and we have passionate fans, and USA Wrestling knows that. And I think that when Barth was, you know, not looking to bring it back or maybe, to, you know, whatever happened there in L.A., and I think, you know, the guys at USA Wrestling were, were I guess, uh, fair enough to look our way. And, you know, th with the trials, the way that the trials were in 2012 and 2016, it only makes sense, really. It's about building world and Olympic wrestling champions, and the Hawkeye Wrestling Club is uh, something you're very proud of. And I know there are many as others out there, like Mike Doty and others, that are so so proud of uh, the effort being put forward by these young men. Please talk about the athletes that populate the Hawkeye Wrestling Club. Well, we have you know some alumni right now with uh, Bobby Telford and uh, Nathan Birak, Matt McDonough. And then, um, you know, the, 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 we got two unique guys that came from Minnesota uh, by the way of Oak Park, Illinois, um, the Dardanes brothers. They've been a great addition. Uh, Metcalf's moved on. Um, Dan Dennis is still with us. Uh, Tony Ramos has moved on. So most recently you've seen, you know, those two guys move on. And one's down in North Carolina. The other one's going to USA Wrestling. Um, and they were great competitors and, and you know, great uh, former Hawkeyes that competed with the Hawkeye Wrestling Club. And now you have, you know, a situation where next year you're going to have Thomas Gilman graduating, Corey Clark graduating, Alex Meyer graduating, Sam Brooks graduating. You know, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of firepower right there. And, um, you know, and with the addition of Telford and and Birak and trying to keep Dennis around, keep him from hugging too many trees, you know. And uh, getting getting those Dardanes boys here has been awesome because they're so pure. You know, when the wrestling escalates, they wrestle harder. They don't want to stand up and throw punches. And and it's really it's really a pure mentality that they bring and kind of reinforce the things that that this program is about. And it's it's so awesome to see that. And and uh, Dennis's energy and Nathan Birak's energy are so contagious. And you know, with with Telford, you know where he's at with his personality. Things are going going really, really well here that way. And, um, you know, these guys, they want to be around here. And, and who doesn't? You know, the guys that aren't here anymore, they still want to be here too. They just happen to, you know, go on and, and uh, you know, take the next venture and the next step in life as they, you know, advance humanity forward. So, you know, it's awesome. It's a, it's a, um, it's a family and they're welcome back anytime. And, you know, I think they know that. As a fan of the sport, I couldn't be any more proud of those guys for com right. being competitors, of course, but then going on to become coaches because they have so much to teach, so much to impart to today's young athlete. Well, I think, yeah, I think they understand people. I think they understand the individual side of it. And, you know, I think that Bill's learned a lot about, you know, he's he's not going to hardline guys to be at camp because he went through it. You know, he, he was in a situation where when he was training that maybe he didn't need to be at camp and that kind of thing. And Metcalf certainly went through it where he was hardlined and told that he had to be at camp when maybe it was better to stay at home. And and so there's a lot of learning going on there. And these guys are are, are wrestling people and they're common sense wrestling people. And that's what we love about them. And that's what what is going to, you know, take this doggone country to the next level in 2020-2024. We've got, a, we've got a ways to go, but you know what? We've got some strong leadership, yourself included. Thanks to Josh Schomberger, by the way. Uh, outstanding interview with him yesterday. The, Iowa City has played host to the Big Tens, the NCAAs, uh, the Olympic trials twice, and uh, proof is in the pudding, as they say. Carver Hawkeye is destination uh, important. In other words, uh, the world is looking. They will be attending. Won't you be a part of it? Make sure you make plans for April 21st and 22nd of 2018 to be on the campus of the world-famous Hawkeye Wrestling Club. Terry, thanks for the time today. We surely appreciate it. Hey, thank you, and uh, thanks to uh, Eddie and Shane and the guys at APS, Nike. And those guys have been really, really good to me, and they, they are pushing this um, 
apparel and shoe industry in the sport of wrestling to another level. And that is awesome to see. And that's exactly what this sport needed. Special thanks to Coach Brands, Coach Bono, the Big Ten Network, and all of our guests on today's show. Be sure to join us later this week for Global Wrestling News as well. And join us live Saturday mornings for Takedown Radio. For all of us in Des Moines, I'm Scott Casper. I hope to see you in Evanston for the 54th edition of Ken Craft Middens. If you can't make it there live, join us on Facebook Live. We'll be doing the broadcast for our 17th consecutive year. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. We'll talk to you again real soon.